Well, hello, everybody. Sorry for the minute tardiness, because I know we always get started at eight, but it's Nate Holloway here with another, 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 another great uh, Files authority, in, authority interview tonight. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, Fathers Authority is a part of Kingdom Relationships, and we exist to change the narrative on fatherhood. Um, tonight, I have my good friend, um, Dr. Yeah, I say doctor. Doctor. Doctor D. Evans. Um, yeah. We're going to talk tonight. I know you're live. You have seen the interview so far, and we've been talking to fathers. But uh, the Lord pressed upon me to talk to some women to talk about fatherhood from a daughter's perspective because we say to hear how fatherhood impacts the children, impacts the kids. We talk about how fathers impact their children and how we should uh, teach fathers what to say to their kids, things like that. So now we want to see what the fruits of those things that we believe a father should do um, have impact, has, and has impacted their children. And we're starting off with the daughters. You know, they say ladies first, ladies first, ladies first. Ooh. Let me start this corny. Um, but, You're just kidding yourself. That's like <laughs> 90 R&B, right? Right, right, right. Uh, so... <laughs> D, how are you tonight, sis? Hello. Hey, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. We are so glad to have you on. So glad to have you on. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, who Who is Dr. D. Evans? <laughs> Dr. D. Evans is just a daughter. That's that's the first thing I say when I preach. You know, you know, the saints say, give an honor to God who was the head of my life, you know. Ah. <laughs> I thank God for being a daughter because I have a revelation of what the the benefits and the joy and the intimacy is of being a daughter of Christ. Besides that, mm -hmm. um, I am an intellectual, I'm an author, I'm an entrepreneur. My business is Quantity and Training Consulting. Yay! And um, I brand um, small businesses and entrepreneurs. And I'm a life coach. And okay. I work a lot with women who, of course, have a lot of daddy issues, whether it be paternal father or the, you know their earthly father um, or their spiritual one. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's good. That, that falls right in line. <laughs> what are you talking about tonight? Then? <laughs> What's your story um, as pertaining to your life growing up with or without your father? You had your father in your life, right? Yes. Yes. I am a daddy's girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, my dad is the epitome of a man, um, in my opinion. I'm, I'm going a, I'm to a be strong. Some people give you this cute cookie cutter version of daddies, but uh, I'm gonna be real. My father was a hardworking man. My mom was a judge, and my daddy was kind of blue collar. He worked a job nine to five. Well, you know, when I say nine to five, you know, I mean like the personification of that. Mm -hmm. But daddy got up at five o'clock in the morning to get to work about six six thirty. He he didn't come home to about six p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. And then I remember he cleaned buildings until I was like in the 10th grade. So I literally only saw my dad when he ate dinner 30 minutes before I went to bed. Oh, wow. For the majority of my life. And he was also a pastor. And so, okay, okay. <laughs> and like, I saw, right. I saw daddy on the weekends. He would take me to the car wash and play basketball. And I thought that was daddy daughter time. And I didn't understand he couldn't find a babysitter. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> when you get older, you get the real behind it, you know? <laughs> Oh. But my dad was always the soft one. You know, I, I would be like, Daddy, mom was mean to me today, you know, because <laughs> he was never there in the first place. So it's kind of like my mom did the majority of caring for me and all that stuff as far as picking me up from school and things like that. But I always knew dad was a financial provider. Okay. I always knew that if I got in trouble, my claim to fame was I'm going to tell my daddy. <laughs> um even I hated going to the doctor. I still hate going to the doctor. And, um, you know, we have to get shots. Like I had the flu. And I remember I told my doctor, if you stick me with that needle, I'm going to tell my dad. <laughs> and when I got home, that's the first thing I did. Daddy, mama, let these people stick this needle in me and we going up there so you can handle it. Right. Wow. So that's my experience as a daughter. I felt like my dad, when I think of him, I think of provider. I think of stability. I think of um, 
stability. I, I think me, because my dad's a, a quiet man. I think that. Yeah. Okay. So so how does that how did that make you feel? How does it make you feel when you when you said things like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my dad, I'm gonna tell my daddy, and he even if like the doctor stuck you, so there was nothing you can do, but doctors, but for him to fix those things for you or fix mm. things for you when things went wrong, how did it make you feel? It made me feel like there was nothing my daddy could not do for me. Like, like to this day, I still feel like I can tell my dad that he's gonna do it. Like there, there were situations where I can be completely honest. I was, I know I was spoiled. I'm, I'm slowly admitting that, you know, I was a little spoiled, you know. So when I moved out on my own in undergrad, I didn't have the concept of how checks worked. Like I thought when you wrote the check that it just came out right then, you know what I'm saying? So I was just blowing through the account, like, oh, I write a check for the rent, it's gonna be in there, you know? And <laughs> I wrote a check that did not, you know, go through this for the rent, ooh. And I only had like $200 in there and my rent was 575. And I literally was like, dad, are they gonna put me out? I don't know what happened. I didn't know this how, I didn't know this how this went. And I went on this long dramatic thing. He said, okay, I'll take care of it on Monday. Simple as that. I don't know what the man did. And I'm not saying he had money like that to throw away, but it's almost like in my immaturity, I disregarded how much work he probably put in to drop $400 on my account. But because I'm such a daughter and I blindly trust my daddy, I've mm -hmm. noticed how I'll just ask and just expect without thinking twice. Mm -hmm. And I do that with my daddy. and His name is Randy, but I doubt it with God. Like I'm always asking God, well, how you going to do it? Because you know uh -huh. the prophecy is this, or I have you know dreamt it this way, and how you gonna work? And I always question. But with my earthly father, if I ask Daddy to do it, and he says yes, it's done. Mm, mm. So, so, so yeah. So in other words, that's how we should be with God. Then you know, absolutely. Like, you doubt God sometimes on, but with your earthly father, you know, Daddy's got it. He gonna do it, no problem. You just go on about your day. Go ahead and lay down. And then when with God, we got it. like you said. God, how you gonna do it? I don't know, God. And we're worrying about it instead of just thinking like, okay, my dad, God is my dad. So our fathers are, so I did say something one time before, what God is teaching, God is fathering fathers, mm -hmm. like the fathers are fathering the kids. So mm -hmm. if God is doing that for the fathers, then the fathers do that for you, mm -hmm. then God is gonna do that for you. That's good, girl, we're gonna preach. Where your um. We are, uh, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, I, I plug it up. Hold on now. Uh, Let me get it. Okay. You're supposed to have it ready. I'm supposed to have it ready. See, mm -hmm. I was gonna pull it out at the close. You know, you I'm bad. You must you have to, we gotta save it for later. I'm hoping, <laughs> yeah. uh huh. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, let me ask you a question. Uh, see, don't start. Well, so what does fatherhood mean to you? Fatherhood means, fatherhood to me means a male that takes responsibility for, and this is weird. My definition is weird. Okay. I'm going to say what I thought. So fatherhood to me is when a man takes responsibility for his wife and his children. That's fatherhood to me. Okay. I feel like um, a man that assumes responsibility over his wife and his children is fatherhood viewing marriage not so much as work but as a vocation i believe marriage is is work in an extent it takes physical strength spiritual strength mental strength but i also believe it is a gift i also believe people are called to be married and i i don't know i don't know if i could define someone to be a good father in my based on my upbringing if they weren't good to my mama his wife does that make sense yeah, that makes total sense yeah because it, even when my parents had little little tips, you know what I'm saying, it, it affected me. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm bruised and battered because of it, but it switched the atmosphere in the house. So fatherhood to me is a man's ability to control his household, to love but be but be firm at the same time. To love but be firm at the same time. That's really good. So you said um, you said something that's good. You said he's a, he's a man that. Ha who assumes responsibility for his wife and his children. Now we're talking about fathers and when we think about fatherhood, we think about just the father and the children. Mm -hmm. Explain that, explain a little bit about the father and the wife, the father with the wife. So how is, 
how is fatherhood play into that in your point of view with the with the with with the wife is not just the children but with the wife as well okay um i grew up in the house my parents my parents are um my i'm my mama's only and i'm my daddy's baby my father has a son outside of my mom um he's like 40 something years old in my mind i'm the only one nevertheless (laughs) from my point of view i felt in retrospect to me growing up i know my dad fathered me well because of the way he listened and guided my mom. Okay. I'm a woman and my mom, of course, is a woman. But I think it's a juxtapose for a man to be able to be the only man in the house and handle two women because we can get a little crazy. But when I think back, (laughs) I saw how my dad was so intentional about setting boundaries. Like sometimes men can be a little pushover, maybe they're passive aggressive. But I saw when he made mistakes with my mom when he was too loud. He learned from them immediately and applied them to me. Even I, I saw how men are very observant, in, in my in my opinion. Men are extremely observant. Their execution might not always be good, but they see stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen how my dad learned from his mistakes every step of the way. And I feel like that plays a huge part in, okay, I'll put it like this, seeing the way that my father loved my mom makes me understand how I cannot just have a baby with anybody. Mm, that's good. Can't just marry anybody. That's good. Because it's bigger than just you caring for my child. It's about you caring for me. Mm-hmm. That we, my potential husband and I will will set for my child is how they're going to view fatherhood. That's good. Because you, you know what I'm saying? When you uh-huh. go to your parent home, it, you just can't talk about the daddy without talking about what daddy did to mama and vice versa. Right. And so for me, I think fatherhood, I immediately get a picture of my mom and my dad. Because to me, they're a unit. That's good. It's almost like the Trinity. They're two persons, but, well, you know, two persons, one unit. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's that's good. Now, and it's, that's a good thing because um, a lot of people don't look at it like that. When you look at fatherhood, if, as from a child standpoint, yeah. When a child has both parents in the home, they have a different perspective yeah. on it because they grow up. Like, I only had my mom. Mm-hmm. I had my godfather who helped my mom raise me, but he wasn't in the house. So growing up, you know, when I think when I think of parenting, all I could think of was my mom. Mm-hmm. Like she was my mom and her boyfriend or my mom just there and my mom doing everything that she could for us. And my mom disciplined us and my mom... Uh, telling me, you know, you can do it, you can do this. You don't ever say you can't, but mm-hmm. I can never picture a father telling me, son, you're great. Um, you can be a champion. You can do this mm-hmm. because I never saw that. But when you look at two parents in the house, you get wisdom from both sides. And like you said, how your father treated your mom, it affected you. So it looks at when you think about it, and that's why I want to do it from a daughter's perspective, because when you look at when you start dating, you you looking at a future husband, when you looking at a man that's gonna embody your, be the embodiment of your father. Yeah. Because yeah. You know somebody's gonna treat you, especially if you when you your parents have a good marriage. Yeah. And you you want that person, you want the same thing that your parents had. And I think that's important for fathers to do because I've said it before, as a father, you teach your daughter what to accept. Yeah. <laughs> what to accept from a man, what type of man to accept and how she would be treated. Because if your father was physically abusing your mom, mentally abusing your mom, verbally abusing your mom, then that's the type of guy that you will accept because then you will let a guy just do that to you. You let him speak, say anything to you, treat you in the kind of way. But because you didn't see that, now when a guy, when any Joe Blow come up to you off the street and be like, yo, I can do this for you, Charlotte, you be like, my dad already do that. Right, my dad do that. <laughs> and you know what's so unique about a, a fatherhood is I think about it how we describe God. You know, mm-hmm. God rarely calls himself a name. You know, it, it's only a few names he calls himself. He calls himself jealous. He calls himself merciful. But the other titles we give him, people attributed to him. Jehovah Jireh, somebody called him that and it became an mm-hmm. attribute. But it's almost like when you have a family children, when the funeral time happens for dad and he's dead and gone, everybody has different stories of daddy. Yeah. 
The, the baby has a different story than the middle child. The middle child has a different story than the oldest child. And so you get these multiple perspectives of what fatherhood is based on relationship. Yeah, that's good. And even for me, I have an older brother, like I said. I didn't grow up with him. I didn't grow up with him. So my brother's perspective of my father is most likely a sperm donor. He paid his child support, saw him on Christmas, but that's all he saw of my dad. And so he that that's affecting how he raises his children and his life. But when it comes to me, my perspective of my father's, you know, fatherhood is so different because my daddy was a different man then. He mm -hmm. was a boy that never had a dad. But when he got with my mom, he was forced to mature. See what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> None of my parents, my mom's dad was a drunk for the most of his life. So his example of fatherhood was kind of a little bit tarnished. My father never had. He didn't know his dad. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like there, they were trying to raise me trial and error. <laughs> gotcha. But like I said, my perspective of my father, he's perfect. My brother is like, he wasn't there. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. And I trust, I, I have that, that, that same experience. Like I never met my father. Um, I know who he is, never met him, but he has uh children on on the other side after after me and i and i kind of met uh, one of them on on facebook and we talked and, and their perspective of him is he's like this great man and like you said he is to them you know yeah. because with me uh, it was never there was an opportunity but um but to them he's like this great dad and it was like they didn't couldn't believe that you know, I was I was out here and he would do that because their view of him was like he's this perfect man, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm not faulting because I've forgiven him and everything. But, yeah. you know, I see what you're saying about how everybody, because my view of him is I don't know. Right. What, I don't know. You. Sperm donor. Um, but their view is he's daddy. And yeah. he's there. He provided for me. He cared for me. I yeah. can go to him for anything. But. Like you said, you and your brother have different views, but that impact of it, because now with you, he has a second chance to get it right. And mm -hmm. after I never knew my father, but my goal, my main goal with Caleb was to be the father that he needs and wants and that he's supposed to have him. Be there with Keisha and raise my son and um, just be that dad. And my, my desire, my dream to be the best father in the world yeah. that's my goal that's yeah, right. the world. and i know to him i am and um but i i wanted to stay like that for for the rest of his life but that was good what's the best part of, of having a father what's the best part of having your dad the best part of having a dad is his it's how different he thinks from my mom like you know i could call my mom and tell her a whole story and she might give me this comedic response but dad sometimes have this point of view. It could either be super overprotective or overly laid back. And I, <laughs> I love the dichotomy. They are like salt and pepper, but it's hilarious. Number two, I love the fact that I feel like dads just have wisdom that don't make sense. Like, it's like, how did you know to say that to me at that time? <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like dads just have this unique ability Um to just know things. But three, there is this protective nature that comes from a dad that I can't explain. It's almost like if you, if you're, if I was sick, the person I call is my mom, actually, because my mom, I know I can get through, but I would not feel safe for real unless my dad was in a hospital room with me with my mom. Oh, wow. Like presence resembles security for me in a different way. If it was there, it, it made sense. Like my, my, my mama could beat me. But if my daddy beat me, oh my God. <laughs> what do you mean? It, he established this presence that makes me feel secure and safe. That's what the fun part is of having a dad. That's good. She said, if my, my mama could beat me, but if my daddy beat me, oh God, like the world is towed up, huh? I'm talking about call the police, call the, call the cops, call the ambulance, call the FBI, something has happened. <laughs> That's funny. So let me ask you, how important are a father's words to his child? Oh my gosh. Are 
They're the things that girls think about when they when they lie down at night. I don't know if women t say this, but that that little five minutes before you fall asleep, your mind just rolls. You know, you think about stuff ten years ago that you never think about. But it's those words of my dad told me I'd be okay. You know, you you think about those pivotal moments in your life, and when you ask for advice, what your father said can make or break a season in your life. And my dad's a pastor, so he's always going to come from a church perspective. He's always going to give me sound advice. But I have a, I have a, plenty of women I, I mentor, and, and I'm their life coach, that sometimes their dads didn't say things that were uplifting and encouraging in mm -hmm. the moment of crisis. And that that they have in their head about it affects them tremendously, even to the point it cripples them in relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I honestly think the words of a father can either edify a daughter or build her down that's a, or so, destroy her yeah that's that's true because your your words as a father our words go into the lives of our children they 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 yeah. go into their heart and they, they follow them because you have you think as an adult you hear things that your father told you back then when you get ready to do something you get ready to make a decision you go back and your mind goes back somewhere daddy said oh, this mm -hmm. you know daddy said that and then you think about it when you're dating um and just i say dating because a lot of times when women with women it that's a big thing when they're dating a guy um what their father said and if we don't yeah. speak truth into our children we don't speak the right words into our children especially our daughters it will affect them for the rest of their lives i look mm -hmm. at people i know that are females that I know the things that fathers said to them and how they turned out they, on the bad side and on the good side. And it's just, it's sad to see sometimes, you know, with fathers when they don't think about, think about it before they say it and what they say to their children and don't know the impact. And some of them don't understand the impact because they didn't know, they didn't have their fathers. So they're mm -hmm. repeating what they saw and yeah. i always say that that can change but they have to have an account of god for that to change to Absolutely. know who a true father is and know what you have to do because that's what happened well, for me um i thank god because if it wasn't for the mentors that god placed in my life and the encounter i had with god i probably i wouldn't know what to do with caleb i, I wouldn't be the father yeah. that that I am to Caleb today or the father that I desire to be because I wouldn't have had any example. And that's the thing. Yeah. So many men don't have an example at all. You know, whether they have the father in their lives or not to show them how to treat their, their daughters. And that that's where a lot of sad to say a lot of abuse come, molestation yeah. and things with yeah. their daughters because they don't see them as their baby girls. They see them just mm -hmm. as female. And you can't see <laughs> daughter as just female you have to see her as your baby girl and that you are her protector and i think um it's sad but that's what happens with a lot of a lot of men when they're molesting their daughters because they don't see them as as mm -hmm. their daughter and absolutely yeah so um what do you feel is the best way a father can impact the, the life of his daughter be present, mm -hmm. being present. Um, it Having that affirmative presence of a father is so important. So if you're a dad, whether you're a single dad, you know, you're not with, you know, your child's mother, being present at school plays, science projects, Easter speeches, you know, I don't care what they do. Fashion shows, they reading a book at the library. When you, I mean, take time out to see the reaction on your daughter's face when you walk in. It's just like my dad's here, you know. That's up my dad's here. He has me. So being present is a lot. Um, number two, I would say be affirming, even though it may sound redundant or age girls can be a little, but trust me the words that you say to her carry her for a lifetime so must definitely be intentional and be affirmative about who she is and how you see her three be impactful by telling your daughter that she's beautiful 
Mm. Because those thoughts of comparison, thoughts of societal norms and standards of beauty is making people depressed on a whole nother level, especially African-American females. Um, and so telling her that she does not need to live up to a European standard of beauty or an African standard of beauty, she's just beautiful because that's how God made her. Um, affirming her to be, be her own type of beautiful will change her life and it will increase her self-esteem. That's what I would say. That's good. It teaches her her value. You know, yes. What, what she's worth and things like that. And that's... Um, that's how fathers really impact. Um, yeah. And it's like you said, they have to they have to be present and they have to affirm and they have to, you know, tell that you love her. You, you're not weak because you tell your daughter that you love her. I had uh, my guest on last week. He said that he's a, a dance dad. So uh, <laughs> he takes his daughter to a uh, dance class and he's there talking about how he had to end up teaching the class. Him and another parent teach the class one day. But I like that because even though he's a man, he's still present and doing the things that his daughter uh, yeah. wants to do. And I, you know, I, I always imagine that you know if I ever have a daughter, that I'm gonna I'm gonna be there when 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 she gets to that age that I'm gonna be doing the tea parties and uh, I don't know if I'm letting her paint my fingernails, but I probably end up doing that. Um, you know, playing with her and yeah. stuff like that, going to the, the dance class and things like that. And I look forward to it. Yeah. Um, because that's that's the joy of fatherhood. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of men don't they don't think about the joy of fatherhood. Yeah. And I and I think that girl, you should you had she's supposed to have the hooper on um, for that. Oh Lord, hold on now. I gotta plug that. You know what I'm you ain't you ain't telling what key you was in. <laughs> but Oh, turn my volume down. Yeah. Hold on. This was wrong with the black musicians today. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah, but a lot of a lot of men don't think about the joy, the joy of fatherhood. And, that, and I just I just I just heard I just got that um that that's a joy. Well, that's a joy in being a father. Uh-huh. And when you be a father, uh-huh, you got joy. <laughs> joy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> So you don't lose that trade of thought. I like having fun. I like having fun. But um, <laughs> there's a joy in being a father, and I, yeah. I feel it every day. I love it. Um, my yeah. wife will get me for being all corny on this uh, this interview. But um, we will know, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> D, I, I appreciate you coming on. Is there yeah. anything any, anything you got that you want to say to fathers that want just a couple last nuggets? That you want that you want to give to fathers out there um, when it comes to their daughters. Um, if you don't, that's good. But if you do, you can go ahead and just um, do your thing. Um, I can bless them through prayer. That that'll work. That's great. All right. So, Father, I ask that you would. Uh oh, come on. You you hear that? That was the Lord. Nevertheless. <laughs> Father, I pray that you would anoint every father to just walk in your footsteps, to um, to be able to mimic your attributes, Father, and be able to nurture, to love, to equip, to protect, to finance, to to uplift, to encourage, to edify your daughters. Father, I, I thank you that you're blessing every man under the sound of my voice to be able to be humble to be able to hear, to be able to be led, to be able to follow instruction. Father, I give them permission to make mistakes. And I also give them permission to correct those mistakes in humbleness and restoration. So Father, I bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus to go forth and to love their journeys of being fathers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, sis, thank you uh, for coming on tonight. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. And we will do this again. All right. Absolutely. All right. You be blessed. See you soon. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye. All right, guys. That was uh, our good friend, Dr. D. Evans. Uh, she gave some good tips. And again, that was from a daughter's perspective on fatherhood. We're going to do some more. I got some other friends coming, um, females that's coming on. It's going to talk about their. Um, how their fathers impacted their lives and how not having a father uh, impacted their lives. And we're going to um, keep going. We got other fathers coming on. 
we got some things coming, guys. So we I hope you guys are enjoying this again. Let us know what you think. Um, go to our website at keenrelationships.org. Uh, email us at krelationships at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about or if you have any questions uh, about fatherhood or anything that you want to know. Um, if you just need to talk, need some advice, just, just let us know. We're here for you. Love you guys. Until next week, same place, same time. I love you guys. Be victorious.